rugs. For some people, simply a place to scrape off the dirt as you enter a room or an abode. But for other people, the basis of an entire civilization, or at the very least, the basis of an entire uh, modding career over the last six months. If you've been playing Fallout 4 um, and been on any kind of forums, you've seen people go rug glitch, rug glitch. Oh yeah, you may have used the rug glitch. It's a phrase which is often used, often shown in videos, but actually surprisingly commonly misunderstood. Because in fact, the glitch doesn't actually have anything to do with rugs. You can use rugs, but you don't have to use rugs. And in fact, there's not one glitch, there's actually two. And in fact, they're not really kind of glitches, they're more just kind of features. So in this video, we're going to try and unpick exactly uh, these kind of glitches are, how you can use them with some nice kind of practical examples. And hopefully we will all, by the end of this video, have a better understanding of the importance of rugs. Greetings everybody and welcome to a very special episode of Build It. Now we're going to be looking at the rug glitch and the reason why I'm looking at the rug glitch is because just like you probably I've watched quite a few YouTube videos of other people building stuff and I've seen people use the rug glitch but I've seen some people use the rug glitch and do X and Y with it and I've seen some people use the rug glitch and do A and B with it but they're doing different things. And the more I kind of look at these kind of videos, I start to think, actually, no, there isn't just one rug glitch. There's two, maybe even three, and each one is used in a different circumstance and does different things. And one of the reasons why I can't use this glitch as well as I want is because, A, I don't really understand it, and B, um, I think the term rug glitch is being misused, overused, and is actually preventing understanding, and it's leading to kind of frustration. So in this video, um, I'm going to be trying to differentiate exactly what the rug glitch is, exactly what the other glitches are, and explaining when you might use one and when you might use the other. And this is probably going to be the uh, the start of um, two or three videos where I go into more depth on these glitches. But this is basically going to be the kind of overview of understanding of what these are. Now, I did a lot of research uh, for this video, especially on the uh, Reddit Settlements Fallout, and especially a massive thank you to Limmy Lom and all of the other regular posters over on the Fallout Settlements uh, Reddit, and I'll put a link to both of those people um, below. And... Um, uh, there's others in there as well, like uh, Martin Haddock and uh, a few Man of the Red. I'm sorry, I, I know I've pronounced that one wrong, but thank you to all of those people that have really helped me over the last uh, few days, and I've been doing lots of reading and experimenting and getting these completely straight in my head, so hopefully I can help you get them straight in yours. Here we go. Rug glitch. Rug glitch number one. You put a rug on the floor, you pick up an object, you put that object on top of the rug, and then you just tap the select button on the rug. Just tap which means you pick up the rug and then the object you've put on top of it gets picked up as well. Why is this useful? Because it now means that that object can go through other objects. And I'll explain more about why that works in a minute. Rug glitch number two, and this is the one I think that is named incorrectly. You put a rug next to another object or objects, so more than one, you hold down the select. Note, you hold down the select, and this time it selects everything that's around you and allows you to move it around. This is useful because it allows us to kind of put objects through other objects, but more importantly, it allows us to ignore the snapping of other objects and put them into uh, kind of positions that they wouldn't otherwise go. But note the big difference here. One was tap and one was hold. Now, because of that, this one selects an entire group. This one just selects the rug. So I'm going to call this one the rug glitch, and I'm going to call this one the group select trick to show that they are different. But in truth, neither of them actually have to involve rugs. So this is, I'm actually not going to touch the rugs for a little bit, and I'm going to show you what these do with other objects um, just to demonstrate uh, what exactly is going on and, and why it works. And that should hopefully help us both kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on here. So this first rug glitch could might as well be called the surface trick. Because basically what's happening is this. Every object has um, kind of a boundary box. There's obviously what you can see, so I can see the edge of this ice cooler. But somewhere in there, the programming of the game knows that this object has a shape. And that's often known as the object's um, clipping or clipping box. And when this object clips into another, 
it goes red. And that is when you can't place it. Now, some objects have very forgiving clipping boxes, which means for this ice cooler will go pretty much right up against this wall before it goes red. But other ones have very kind of, let's call them enthusiastic clipping boxes like this Nuka Cola machine. I'm barely anywhere near this uh, wall and it's already gone red. There's already, if I just go so it's just about, uh, just about yellow. I am still some distance from this wall and it's not going to let me moving in there. And that's because the clipping box is of, of this one is actually a lot bigger than what I can see. Now, what the rug glitch does, or the surface trick does, is it allows the game to kind of forget um, the clipping box of certain objects. So all this, this works is by taking an object, putting it on a surface, which could be a rug, yes, but it can also be a foundation, a piece of floor, um, et cetera, et cetera. You stick one on the other, and then you pick up the floor. Now, the floor is completely solid. If I try and put the floor through this wall, it's clearly not going to work. But if I put just the object on the floor through the object, through the wall, it is going to work. Because when I pick up this wall, this, this floor, this surface, the game has kind of forgotten. It's a bit of a glitch. The game has kind of forgotten that the ice box is actually there. And therefore, it forgets its clipping box too. And this basically allows you to put objects through other objects or, crucially, objects a lot closer to other objects than perhaps you would before. So that nasty little Coke machine that wouldn't go right up against the wall, if I use this little trick, I can put it through, but I can even just put it right up against it as well. Now, all of these glitches have little features and quirks, and I'm gonna be going into these in more detail in, uh, in future videos. And one of these little quirks here is if I put the floor away, the object will drop back down kind of into place. And the reason what, because these, and because these objects drop back into place, that is why, people use the rug because it is the thinnest flat surface available for this trick. Now you've probably seen a lot of people using something like this. This has become very popular in lots of videos, which is to take a rug, put another rug on top and put another rug um, on top of that. Now, why are they doing that? Is there anything special about three rugs and, and so on? Uh, no, it, there's nothing special about three rugs at all. All that's ha is happening here is the same thing that just the first rug is being picked up and then the game is kind of forgetting about the other objects and it allows us to kind of clip them through um, other places. Um, but the reason why three rugs have been used is to allow us to get um, us, it's, it's basically to give us a longer object to pick up. So I can put this um, fridge basically kind of further away from me or further into another object because I've got this kind of big tower of mats. So I can actually put this quite far into there, but as soon as the actual rug that I'm holding, or the mat that I'm touching, uh, touches the wall, it all goes red and it and it won't work. But that's all that's going on here. This is just a useful placement tool by putting rug on top of rug or top of rug. But this could, this could easily be floor with floor, uh, well, floor with rugs on it or something like that, just kind of a collection of surfaces. The other reason people use more than one rug is to help know when an object is actually on the rug. If I just put this uh, lovely little uh, trading stand on here and then proudly come down over here and pick up my rug, you'll notice that I have actually completely failed to pick up the uh, trading stand and I've just walked off without it. Uh, one way you can adjust this is to look for when the object kind of just bumps a little bit or kind of moves up a little bit and there you see that it just jolted up slightly i'll go down again so now it's nice and low and look for the jolt there you see that now it's jolted now um, i can pick up this object now why would i use this glitch or when would i use this glitch this glitch works with objects that don't snap into place you know how walls go oh, oh, oh snap and uh, other objects like bridges kind of snap one into the other and roofs and floors and things like that um, tend to snap into each other. And so the general rule is, is that anything which is in the structures menu and has a snap to it anywhere will not work with this surface rug glitch. So for argument's sake, if I pick up this shack wall and I stick it on top of this rug, it's not going to matter where I put it. It is never going to pick up um, that wall. Unless, of course, you know any tricks that I don't. But this is the general rule about when you use one and when you use the other. But if it is any other kind of decorative object or furniture object or, you know, or whatever it is, then it will work really well. You just have to make sure that the object is actually on top of um, the rugs, you know, by looking for that little bump if necessary, and then it will allow you to use this and place it wherever 
um, you want. So that's the rug glitch, the surface glitch, and it allows us to place objects through other objects or really close up to places that you wouldn't necessarily before. Very, very handy um, and um, commonly seen all over the web. Now let's talk about the other glitch though. So we talked about the fact that you can group select um, using a rug as well. So I've hold, I held down the the, 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 the the select button and I selected more than one object. But now let's get rid of the rug because I again want to show you that this is actually nothing to do with the rug. It's to do with group select. So now I'm going to stop calling it group select trick. I'm going to start calling it uh, sorry, I'm going to stop calling it the rug glitch. I'm going to call it the group select trick. So I've got here, I've got my dog house and now I'm going to select the dog house and we've got the same trick. So it's nothing to do with the rugs, it's just to do with holding down group select. Now let's talk about why this is useful. I am going to take this wall and I'm going to imagine that I want to make a hexagon you know, out of my walls. I want to make a room that is a nice five shaded hexagon shape. And I'm going to pick up this wall, I'm going to walk over here and oh, no, can't quite get the hexagon shape. Let's go in, let's try and move in a little bit nearer. It's about here, oh snap. Now this is the objects snapping, and we mentioned that a minute ago over by the other objects, because these objects are snapping objects. They snap above, they snap next to, um, they go into corner shapes, etc, etc, and you can't really stop this snapping effect, and it would really restrict where you can place these objects unless you use the group select trick, which of course you can do with a rug, but I'm just going to do it with the doghouse to, sh to show you that it isn't actually anything to do with that. We group select these objects, and now all of the snapping has been taken away. The clipping is still there. So I still can't like put this object through these other objects, but I can now put it at any angle and any kind of um, distance from the other object and it will quite comfortably go in there and I can now remove any other objects like the doghouse or whatever I'm group selecting with and it will quite happily stay there. By the way, I hope you're enjoying Sanctuary in the Snow. Thank you very much, the Fallout Seasons mod. Um, and in short, this is what the group select trick does. Now it used to do more. If you have, you may well see other videos that do more with the group select trick, but that's because Fallout is always being updated, especially over the year 2015, 2016. And before 1.4, you used to be able to group select pick up the wall and cut in like this. That does not work anymore. So if you see someone on a video doing that, yes, they did it, but you can't because it's now been updated and it doesn't work. Um, but it does allow you to ignore um, the, the snapping of the object. Now we can do something even cleverer with this. If we pick up an object which can go through floors, so foundations and pillars and bridges, if we then group select with this, that kind of um, floor snapping property will be transmitted to the objects that we're picking up. So if I group select here, now my wall will quite happily go through the floor with the, with the foundation, and I can even use it to take that wall into the air. And unlike the rug glitch, the group select trick will not drop back down when I take the other object away. That is now placed there. That is floating. It will stay. It has become a static um, floating um, object. And this, of course, gives us lots of possibilities uh, for placing objects in places where they shouldn't be and allows us to um, really kind of control and do cool little tricks. And I, and I, and I showed some in my uh, in some of my other videos um, with the generators where I put a, a, an outhouse through the floor and put a power station in, a power plant in there and, and all sorts of things like that. But just give me just give you some very basic examples. Um, oh, did you see that? I selected it and the whole thing jumped into the air. If that happens, cancel the whole thing, select the first object, uh, deselect the whole object and then select it again and it should sort itself out. If it doesn't, you just do it again. Select it, deselect it, select it and now it's fine. Okay, so you will you will sometimes find that things just gonna fly up into the air and you'll be like, ah! So just deselect, just select one object, deselect that object and then, and then try again. It should sort itself out. But let me give you some examples here. I'm just gonna take this object down and then I'm gonna actually gonna take down this object twice. Um, so I'm gonna grab it. I'm going to take this one down. Now look, I have just created myself a little fence using the top of the wall. Or perhaps this could be a window. If I built a house around the edge of this object, then I've just made myself a low beam place where my settlers can look out and enjoy the beautiful views. Um, another possible example here might be to place objects where you can't before. Now have a look at this. Have a look at this. 
Um, this door is a snappable object, so therefore I can't use um, the rug glitch, the surface glitch, but I can use the group select trick. I'm gonna, so I've placed this door inside this doorway, but now I'm gonna delete the doorway, which leaves me just with the door. So then we take our pillar, and remember it doesn't have to be a pillar, it can be any other object. In fact, in fact let's change this a little bit, let's, let's do it with a chair, just to show that we can. I'm gonna stick this chair here, I'm gonna group select this, it's gonna grab the door as well, but obviously certain objects have to be closer to certain objects than others. To, to pick them up. I've grabbed this and now look, I can move this door wherever I want um, because it now works like this. And in fact, I can use this trick to place this door in the doorway of Sanctuary. Now, if I was using the uh, the pillar or a foundation piece, then I could then go up and down and up and down as well. But just with this chair, I'm gonna move this here, move it out of the way and look, I've got myself a working door in Sanctuary. And if I wanted the door going the other way, then you just kind of put it in the other way. And yes, it's slightly floating, but you get the idea. Now, the point is for this video is that you understand and I understand exactly what is going on. Because then you can start to be like, all oh, right, okay, I'm going to use the group select trip because that's a clipping object. And I'm going to have to do that to do this to make it work. And I can change its height and so on. Oh, but this object is just a, a non-snapping object, like a decoration or a chair, so therefore I could use the original rug glitch um, to kind of put it into place. So I hope that helps you understand um, the difference between these two techniques. Now I feel this video has now gone on long enough, but I have so much more I wanna to talk to you about. So in future two videos, I'll be going more in depth on uh, what you can do with the rug glitch and showing you some photographs and uh, creating some cool little things with you to show you kind of uh, ideas for what you can do and more perhaps more importantly going into more in depth about onto what the uh, the group select um glitch can do and showing you some photographs from Imager and some lovely examples from uh, Limmy Lom and other re uh, readers are from the Reddit um, about the kind of things that you can create with this. So I hope you have found this useful and informative. If you have, then please um, do like the video, subscribe to the channel, come back and watch more. The other tutorials may be, may be up already, so go and check the uh, um, the playlist and uh, do check out some of my other videos as well. I've got build it's, I've got mod it's, I've got role plays. Um, so there is no excuse for you ever watching anyone else ever again but you have been fantastic. And thank you for spending a little bit of your evening with me. We have lots more to learn. So come back and we'll learn it together. But for now, I hope your, all, of your rich, all of your glitches will be rugged and may all of your rugs always be glitched. Goodbye.